Ladies and gentlemen, Caravan fans, welcome back to Mount Carmel's official podcast, Built on Dante. My name is Matt Malay, going to be your co-host today. I'm here with Christos Dimas. Christos, we've got a few days left. We're counting down, getting towards the end of the school year. How you feeling, man? Ready to be done, Matt. I'm ready for summer, ready for a break. And um, so we're joined here by Louie. I know he's done, too, yep. kind of ready to yeah. you know, relax a bit before college. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, talk about yeah. being done. We have Louis Chapato here. He was the student body president for his class, the class of 2024. You guys graduated, I think, on the 14th, right? So yeah. you guys, you guys have been out for a few weeks here now. Oh, yeah. um, you haven't been in the building in quite some time as a student. Finally, a part of that alumni. What's it like, man? How you been feeling? What uh, emotions have been going on? I guess in this entire month. Well, first off, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Uh, being an alum now, it's really weird. Uh, you don't really like do anything now, just waking up every day and you're like, Oh, I mean, you don't, it's not the first thing you think of now being a alumni, but you know, I've always wanted to be a Mount Carmel alumni, uh, said it for the last four years. Can't wait to graduate. So now I finally am one. It feels, it feels yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And how was that whole graduation experience for you? Uh, we've talked to a couple seniors. We had Alec Padilla come on yep. here. Um, he he received an award, and so did you actually yep. there. So what was the whole experience like, you know, because adults talk it up, yeah. right? Usually it's at Rockefeller, but you know, it changed um, to, to some circumstances. But um, I know John O'Connor says a lot about you're going to be back here in these steps in four yeah. years when he takes you out there when you're a freshman. Yeah. So now that you went through the thing, how do you feel now? Like, did it live up to the expectations, I guess? Or? Yeah, it was definitely really cool. Uh, we didn't, I didn't really think it was going to be as, like, scenic as it was. That church, because I've never seen that church before. But, you know, once you got there, and it was a long drive, too, and you had to get there on your own. And once you got there and you waited outside, you didn't see the chapel or the real church yet. So when we walked in and, you know, walking through the middle and kind of just seeing all the parents and all the, all the family there and then looking up and seeing how huge this church was, it was, it was breathtaking. And, you know, it was really like eye opening just seeing a church like that. And then, then you have to go through the whole mass and then you go through the actual graduation ceremony. So we were in there for a while, but it was, it was really cool. The church was cool and it, it got loud in there too. Mm -hmm. You know, when we, flipped the uh, flipped the cap and you realize you were really a graduate and they announced you and the parents went crazy it was really loud in yeah there, and i didn't expect that either yeah that's i mean your parents were there not only yeah. to support you <laughs> yeah. but because they kind of had to be there oh, yeah. um your mom works at the school she's been working here for I, 25 tw years now 20, wow wow 25 yeah. years um and she gave the commencement speech okay. she was the first woman to ever do it yeah what's it like to be the last son in your family right yeah. what has your mom kind of uh said to you maybe uh yeah. during this whole graduation process uh what's it what's it been like for the Chapetto family specifically with your mom though because this has got to be a crazy time for her there's a lot of things going on oh yeah. yeah it's been really cool you know my older three brothers all went to Carmel so you know I remember being ever since I was born I've always been around uh, because of my mom and she's been here, I said 25 years, but I think it's actually 23, maybe 20, mm. somewhere 20 to 25. Yeah. So she's always been here. So being around always was really cool. Uh, I always knew she was kind of important. Uh, I think if you talk to anyone that went to Carmel from 2003 and up, they always, they always mention Mrs. Geppetto as the art teacher. And then once I got here, she kind of became more than just the art teacher because she was always just the art teacher and then she was assistant with athletics then the dean role and she's always been you know just around doing anything she possibly could so you know it was really really cool to see her finally get some you know big recognition like talking at the actual graduation was really cool um you know i didn't think her her speech was really good and i didn't think i was gonna cry at the at yeah. the actual graduation, I I didn't cry, but everyone in my family that was there cried, and even some of our graduates cried. But I held it together. I, w I wasn't <laughs> crying, though, but <laughs> I kind of thought I was going to. But once I got there, I was like, "All right, I th I think I'll be all right." And, mm -hmm. You know, that was really cool seeing her being able to get some recognition, and she got a loud, loud yeah. applause. 
a lot of standing ovations. So, yeah. you know, it felt good seeing that because, you know, being able to, to know that that's your mom and mm-hmm. get her finally getting the real recognition she deserves, that's really cool. Did you see any of the preparation for that? Or did she kind of, she, like, keep it a secret of what she was going to talk about? She didn't tell me what she was going to say. Mm-hmm. She she And then after she told us that she didn't want to tell us because then she would have cried in front of us. Uh, but she, I, like, after her speech, she was able to tell us more about, like, the prep that went into it. But I, going into it, I had no idea what she was going to say. Um, but she said, like, she worked a lot with Miss Smola and Doc Berry going over the speech, so she didn't screw up she said but you know she said every time she she gave the prep speech she always cried because she cries a lot <laughs> i want to say she cried at, even at the mother's day was it the mother's day mass where she got recognized too yeah she she got recognized there and uh maybe green jacket yeah. they gave some yeah. awards to various teachers yeah so she said she was crying there she didn't have to give a speech but you know, she she cries a lot, and so I kind of expected her to cry a little bit more at the actual yeah. speech, but she did good. And then after, she was able to, you know, say she didn't want to cry that much. But she did a really good job, and it was really, really, you know, happy for our whole family to be able to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah you mentioned having three older brothers, too, going through. I remember watching uh, Charlie play basketball, but kind of – what was that like kind of growing up in that Carmel atmosphere and like some yeah. of your impressions of Carmel before you actually got there? So it was it was really cool once I actually got to Carmel to be a student because I've always been around. Like in my dad, he used to coach basketball at Richards High School. So I was always around Richards and Mount Carmel. And honestly, I kind of always wanted to be a basketball player at Richards. <laughs> and then yeah. I kind of realized I wasn't a basketball player. But I was, you know, ever since I could remember, I was the the water boy, the ball boy for Carmel football. Always at, you know, every Mount Carmel basketball game I could be at, the bat boy for Coach Hurry forever. So, you know, I always remember Mount Carmel sports more than anything. Like, I think I was talking with Hurry the other day about, like, the 2013 state championship for baseball. And he was, like, shocked I remembered that much of it. But I was like, that <laughs> I remember right. all of it. Yeah. I remember being there and, you know, just – talking about Mount Carmel sports forever I've always remembered it pretty well that's another thing I think I've talked to Christos a lot about is like professional sports in Chicago is yeah. terrible yeah, so right we now. like we rely on Mount Carmel sports so much <laughs> that's a good way to put and, it yeah. yeah and we could talk about these teams like that 2019 the undefeated team yeah. for football mm-hmm. like um I forget who it was but there's somebody I think who could name all every every kid that started. And oh, like, I probably could do it too. Right, yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, you could sit here and just talk about yeah. these guys for so long because yeah. it's like, would you rather watch the three and whatever Bears yeah. or, or you get, you're gonna watch the undefeated Caravan? Right? It's just such a huge difference. Yeah, that's a good way to put. It. I didn't even think uh-huh. about it like that, but yeah, that 2019 team. I was the ball boy for that mm-hmm. one. That was that was a really good team. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. I know uh, Mr. DiFilippo, who is a couple offices down yeah. from where we're recording this, he has um, the uh, he has this picture of the state champ- the state champion team you're talking about with baseball back in 2013. Yeah. They got the ring on there too, so mm-hmm. uh, they have list every player. So um, they're on a run right now. Yeah, the current hot. team. Um, you know, it, it's funny you bring that up because. It, the program was at such a weird spot this year, yeah. such a young program. Mm-hmm. And everybody um, kind of took that as, oh, well, maybe they'll make it to this this far and mm-hmm. we'll, that will take it. But they're on a run right now. Yeah. They've got Nazareth tomorrow. I know you are – you're a lot of things for the team. <laughs> but I think to kind of encapsulate, you're basically the manager, yeah. I guess. Or what would you call yourself? I honestly mm-hmm. wouldn't even – I don't even know what to call myself, honestly. I – the different jobs that I was given was really just run the social media, uh, make those graphics, uh, keep the Twitter game updates. And then for home games, I was like the PA announcer as well as like the music director. But I guess you could call it a manager. Yeah. Uh, so, but like away games now, I've kind of gotten a new role of just being in the dugout and kind of being like a mental health coach or something, <laughs> like guys, which is pretty cool because I've always been pretty good at like having yeah. a good player mindset for every sport. So a couple of the guys, if they've, you know, been struggling or whatever, and I've, I'm in there, I try to not talk too much to them, but I'll just be like, hey, you're all right. Give yeah. them a quick little talk. 
I mean, especially for baseball, it's yeah. such the mental side of baseball is unlike any other. I think like golf might yeah. rival it a little bit, but baseball, you're up there. So mental. I mean, hard. One of the hardest, you know, that that's a pretty famous saying is, the hardest thing to do in sports is is hit. Yeah. You know, you, you get up there. Exactly. You're these guys and uh, who are professionals, they're paid to do it three out of ten times, yeah. right? So. As a high school kid, yeah, right. So as a high school kid, it's like, I I can't even imagine what those guys are feeling, you know. Yeah. Because Timmy Harrigan will go up there, he'll go for four for four one game, yeah. And then the next three games, it's like, why can't I hit the ball? You know, exactly. I'm I'm not singling out Timmy or anything, yeah. but it's a, it's a great example, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so and we were talking again today, uh, when they moved the game time, it yep. was um, this sectional championship against Nazareth. It was originally scheduled for this Saturday at 11 and then it got moved to tomorrow and we were talking about like that's another factor you yeah. know I think any, it helps I think it helps Carmel yeah yeah really well. yeah I mean any other sport because Nazareth for those who don't know they're 37 and 0 they're undefeated mm-hmm. being undefeated in baseball yeah you know wow like you, you gotta have a little luck yeah, there I feel like definitely. um so uh, you know what are your expectations for tomorrow though because um the, Mount Carmel has been struggling around that 500 point. Right now they're 17 and 14, I believe. Mm-hmm. They've been under, they've been over, they've had these great stretches. So, what should fans expect for tomorrow from your standpoint? Because you're around, yeah. you're around the guys a lot. Well, for one, Nazareth is really, really good. They're senior led. Uh, I was able to watch a little bit of them this year. Uh, big names too. Like I think eight out of nine of their starting nine are Division One baseball wow. players. Maybe even all nine. And so seeing uh, like a team like that that's 37-0 and in high school baseball is really hard. But at the same time, you're bound. you got to lose. you got to know how to lose in right. high school sports. I mean, you saw it with us. Junior year of football, you know, 2022, we went 14-0. and Then we won eight straight, went to Loyola, lost that one. And I, and I think, I mean, we were really good this year, but I think right. if we didn't lose to Loyola, like, that would have been a huge struggle the rest of the playoffs because we had no idea how to lose. And, you know, once you know how to lose and move on after you lose, it's huge. So I think if Carmel Baseball can, you know, figure out to just play their own game and do themselves and not do anything out of the ordinator, out of the ordinary, they will be fine. Right. That's definitely a huge theme mm-hmm. where teams are due for a loss. Yeah. Um, like you said, with Nazareth, but then also with the football team, like heading into Loyola, mm-hmm. That was definitely like the most shaky. Yeah. I feel like I've been for a game because, mm-hmm. it, and it's not even like the actual playing part. It's the whole feel of the game. Yeah. We're heading up to Will Met, away game, final game of the season. You know that both of these teams have a very good shot at yeah. winning state, which they both did. Mm-hmm. But you know that game was so different. Christos, I know, knows a lot about this. Basketball is one of the most up and down. Crazy stretches. I know um, two years ago, uh, our team started off 18-0, and 0, yep. the basketball program. Yep. I think maybe it was 17 or 18-0. 18-0. <clears throat> and and yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, you know, pick up, you know, St. Ignatius comes here. Yeah. Josh Barron had a really good game. Or Richard Barron, I mm-hmm. think was his name. Um, you know, Rita, obviously, was yeah. a tough one. Um, there's there's probably five I think we had five losses within a span of like ten games then after going eighteen and zero, and and then even just in the games too I mean you look at games this year like De La Salle yeah. we're down by twelve at halftime and then right. we win by twelve you know but yeah real quick too going back to baseball I think going against Nazareth after mm-hmm. seeing some of the results yeah. around IHSA it's actually a little more hope for us right yep. you got number two New Trier lost number three st lawrence lost yep. number six normal number nine lincoln way central so i mean it's it's any man's game really yeah. so i mean yeah they're 37 and 0 but and definitely in baseball something. too like base the reason why like i love like i played baseball basketball soccer football growing up but i love baseball more that's my favorite sport like i love mm-hmm. baseball more than anything and I'm pretty, like, more advanced in, like, knowing the game and knowing a lot about baseball. And, like, the reason, like, I love it so much is, like, anything can happen. Like, you get a pitcher and he's off one day and, like, you're not going to be on your on your best every game. So, like, the reason about baseball is, like, anything can happen. It makes it really yeah. fun. Yeah, which is also why yesterday mm-hmm. when they played Rice, 
and Tosi went all <laughs> seven innings. That like that's impressive <laughs> though because we beat Rice earlier in the season. Oh yeah. Um, and it's always hard to beat the same team twice, but to yep. do it in a sport like baseball, where it like you said, anything can happen. Yep. I love it. Also, shout out to three nothing. Like you didn't let anybody that get runs. That's yeah, insane. That's awesome. Right from one guy too, Sophomore. which is unbelievable. Yeah. So Impressive. shout out to Ian. I mean. That's unbelievable. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I I don't know. Uh, who do you think will be on the mound tomorrow? It'll you, be Jake. J- that's what. That's what. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's incredible as well. Uh, our our we've got a pretty strong pitching lineup. You know, bullpen oh, yeah. this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I know at the start of the season, um, that was kind of what we were going to rely on yeah. is from from talking to people because I feel like out of all the sports here. Um, baseball might be one of the ones I know the least about. Mm-hmm. I remember that state championship, but I, I we were pretty young when that happened. Yeah. And then I know the program had a couple of rough years, mm-hmm. and then obviously football and basketball were at the top or whatever. But mm-hmm. baseball has definitely had this like it, it's just reignited in the past few years, and yeah. all these kids are coming in, and mm-hmm. you've got T.J. McQuillan committed to Louisville, and yeah. Joey Ireland committed to Illinois, and the best part about it is that they're both underclassmen. Yeah. They're both sophomores. We've got m- a couple of years with these guys. Yeah. So now that they're playing in the sectional championship tomorrow, it's like mm-hmm. the best is yet to come, Yeah. right? Or they're not over. So, yeah. Um, I You know, Chrysos was on the basketball team this year, and I kind of felt like all or nothing mm-hmm. with that state run um, now that these seniors are going to be on. But for baseball, it just this guy's the limit is yeah. what it feels like, honestly, and, yeah. And definitely the fact that they're young, too. Like, a lot of people, like, when you watch high school sports, like, when you get into playoffs, they'll always try and say, like, senior-led teams win. But, like, you know, or if people at Carmel say, oh, well, if we don't win this year, you know, okay, we got sophomore. Like, the whole starting infield sophomores – majority of the team's underclassmen but like i would always say like who cares win now like if you can win now like, right why, yeah. why why even like say like oh well we can always win next year like go and win now and win as much as you can like that's yeah that's how i see it. and I, i'm glad the seniors on this baseball team has realized that too like i know at the beginning of the year a lot of people around carmel baseball are like when the struggle they're like all right well we're all sophomores and you know the seniors like I love, like, Timmy Harrigan's always like, I don't care. Like, let's win now. Like, right, yeah. You know, they don't have a lot of seniors that are playing right now, but, like, who cares? Like, this is their last last shot at this. Like, it doesn't matter if you want to wait, you know. Man, I think that's just kind of dumb. Like, go and win now. And Tim, right. Timmy, James Nider, like, they've done a really good job of being senior leaders on that team and being like, I know we're young, but this is our last shot. Like, who cares? Let's win now. And mm-hmm. I love it. And I, th- I think that's why – they can really do this thing. Yeah. Well, if uh, the boys do end up winning tomorrow, they will take on either Lincoln Way West yep. or Providence, mm-hmm. two powerhouses as far as baseball goes. Providence has been good for ever. Ever. I mean, the, like they are a baseball school. Yeah. Um, so it'll it'll be tough, but one game at a time. So yeah, tomorrow, really. um, if you can make it, please come out. They'll play at Revis tomorrow. Um, Louis, you'll be there. Four you'll be help, yeah. You'll be the mental health coach in the dugout, <laughs> like you said. Um, but kind of uh, pivoting a little bit back to you playing football. Okay. You decided to uh, continue. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're not done. You're still out there kicking for Whitewater this time. Yep. Uh, come this fall, why choose to play college sports? I know for some people it might just be a very simple question to answer. It's like. Why wouldn't I? You know, but it, it can get a little more complicated. So why did you choose to yeah. continue to play football? Yeah, I definitely, there was a lot of patches during my four years here where I kind of like was like, eh, I don't know if I really want to play football in college. Like, I remember freshman, sophomore year when that was kind of like the non-recruitable times for kickers. And I was always like, yeah, I'm going D1. And then like the recruiting happens junior year. And you get those D1 looks that, you know, I had. And then I go, you know, I get injured. It's the classic, you know, got injured story. But mm-hmm. I think it was the best thing possible for me because, you know, like the Division One recruitment is so, like, it's so mentally draining. And mm-hmm. go through that junior year, I get hurt, I don't play, or I'm, I was only doing PAT field goal, win that state championship. And then I kind of had a realization that, like, going D1 in football is not the end of the world if you don't. Like, 
Mm-hmm. And I remember junior going into senior year, you know, did the recruitment, did it the right way. And now it was like, okay, to me right now, the most important thing is being a leader on this team as a senior and winning another state championship. So I kind of put the college recruitment to a side and I was like, whatever happens, happens. Played the senior year, thought I did pretty well. Uh, I tried my best to really be a leader on that team. Uh, you know, you don't really see a lot of kickers being leaders, so right. I wanted to kind of change that stigma that there was. So being a part of that team this year was really, really awesome. Uh, win that state championship. So once I got into, like, the recruitment after the season, I think the biggest thing for me was I want to win, continue winning, because being at Carmel, like, that's all you do is you get held to that standard. Right. And uh, so I was like, what level am I going to be at? And I could either pick – you know, go to a Division One school and, you know, not know if I'm going to ever play. You know, I'm five foot seven, 140 pounds. Like, going into a v- Division One football program and being around grown men is <laughs> yeah intimidating. So, you know, when I went and took my recruitment more serious after the season, I was like, I know what level I can really be at. And, you know, I got a lot of texts and emails and Twitter, you know, DMs and, I kind of went up, wanted to go about it really smart, and I remember going on Kairos in December and coming back, and, you know, that was a big time in senior recruiting, so I had all these texts, and I saw one from UW-Whitewater, and I was, it, my eyes lit up. I was like, you know, because I remember hearing about Whitewater always winning these national championships. I always knew of Whitewater, but I never really, you know, thought I would go to that level. So once I saw that, like, I just, right away, I was like, this is like, if I can go and visit and like it, and this situation fits me perfectly, like, I'm going to, you know, take it. And so I went and visited and, you know, talking to Coach Rendall, the head coach at Whitewater, you know, his biggest thing to me was, you know, you go to a program at Mount Carmel where you win, you won two state championships, you come here, you're going to do the same thing. And, you know, one of the other things that stuck out to me about Whitewater was, they are very like pay attention to the details and very competitive like that was huge for me it's like i want to compete like i want to be at that high level i don't care if it's division three like they're a high level they're going to be playing till december every year and coach rendall like the head coach there is just telling me like you went to mount carmel and you know we know of mount carmel being that super high um athletic you know yeah school and you know you guys win your state championships and you compete at a high level like you're gonna fit in perfectly and I think another thing is that he took you know kicking serious like not a lot of colleges really okay like you're a kicker we just need you to go out there and kick your extra points and field goals and if you miss we'll yell at you if you make it we'll love you like he was very important he made me feel very important as you know we're trying to build a winning program and a kicker is a part of the 11 people on the field. And, you know, if we if our kicker is the loose string or the, you know, the weakest link, like, we're not going to win. He's like, I don't care what, you know, what other Division three schools is, you know, competing at the same level. He told me, he was like, listen, like, the kicker's a part of the team. You know, I'm going to treat you as I would my quarterback or linebacker. And that personally was like, I really love to hear that, and I knew right away once I visited, and he told me that I was like, "This is gonna be the spot." Yeah, yeah. Back to that kind of like hate love thing with yeah. kickers. There's a few positions in sports that are kind of like that, mm-hmm. where it's like if you do your job, it's like, all right, whatever, you know, like that's all right. But if you don't do your job, mm-hmm. you're kind of hating on a little bit. Oh, yeah. And I think here at Carmel, um, I'm not saying you were hated on or anything, no. but you definitely had definitely. Uh, less opportunities i guess yeah. to kind of uh prove yourself because you know i don't want to like how do i, pu- I put, how do i put no. this politely we we score a lot of touchdowns yeah. we don't kick a lot of field goals exactly. you i think you kicked five this year this I wanna year say it was five or six i think yeah it was. maybe i think maybe six but yeah. look that's a handful yeah. right there there are high school teams out there kicking five a game yeah. like like exactly. you know they're struggling so much to get in the end zone and so you know what what were 
what was going through your mind during that? Like, if mm-hmm. if you missed one, were you like, oh my god, like this is gonna impact what yeah. colleges text me? This is mm-hmm. gonna impact what the the coach I was texting? Like, yeah. this is gonna impact uh, whether or not he wants to bring me in? Like, you know, that's got to be nerve wracking. So, how did you like stay focused during basically the entire season? Yeah. I think, and the other thing is like the hate love relationship. Like, a lot of kickers complain about it, but. I kind of like it, honestly. It makes me more motivated to not screw up. Like, Mm -hmm. you can't miss. Like, especially at Carmel, like, we're so highly competitive. Like, with Coach Lynch, I knew if I was missing, I wasn't going back out there the rest of the game. And I think, I want to say it was my junior year we played Rice, and I missed a PAT. I didn't go back out the rest (laughs) of the game. I mean, at the time I was upset, but I was like, I get it. I know what he's doing, and it's motivated me so much. And this year, I want to say – uh, first, what was the first field goal we attempted? I think it was against Rita, and I missed like a 23 yarder. Which, like, if I were to go on the field right now and kick the 23 yarder with my flip flops on, I could nail it with yeah. no stretch or whatever. Like, that's something I could make, you know, 10 out of 10 times. And that was a, f- I, I want to say that was the first one of the year we attempted, and I missed. And I remember, like, here we go again. Like, oh. and I, I would just, I knew what I did wrong. And luckily, I remember Javi Payne got interception, returned it. So I was able to kick, I want to say, a 37-yarder at the end of the first half. And I remember that, yeah. If, I think if Javi didn't intercept that, I was not going out the rest of the game. Yeah. So uh, thank God to Javi. But I was able to prove myself, and I nailed it. And that's just, you know, it's so mental. Like, you cannot miss. And I pride myself on just being consistent, like, Obviously, I'm not the biggest guy, so I'm not going to be nailing 58, 60 yarders right. in a game. But if you can be consistent and, you know, your coach knows what he's getting out of you, that's the biggest thing. And for me, you know, I, you know, obviously you're thinking about coaches and recruiting when you're playing. But during the games, like, I was so, like, laser focused of just, if I get my chance, I got to just do what I have to do to make this and not think about what's going to happen if I miss. Think about what's going to happen if I make it. Yeah. Well, we're definitely glad things worked out for you <laughs> and that colleges didn't, you know, they decided to take you on because yeah. UW-Whitewater is a great school yeah, for football. Um, but, yeah, like that that always stuck out to me because uh, each week Christos and I get a PDF of all the stats. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'll look through it and I'll eventually get to, um, you know, just like basic scoring. Mm-hmm. I look, it's like, dude, we're in the – 11th week of the season and Louis has kicked three field goals like what is going on you know it's yeah. insane to me uh-huh. so right you go out there and it's like all right this is the first field goal i've kicked in six weeks yeah. let's see how this goes you know so it's unbelievable yeah. um uh but yeah yeah i mean you finished what like third in pats though right, right? in carmel yeah. history so no, man. for pats i was one for field goals i was yeah. I was pretty low around the field goals, but the PATs I was one, and scoring out of kickers I was two. I think that was mm. something I paid attention to a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's that, awesome. That's that, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. Uh, we tracked down that record. I forget which game it was that you broke it. No, yeah, Batavia was when I broke mm, okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I remember the last few weeks we were like yeah. that was in our like slideshow or presentation yeah. or whatever every time. I didn't think I was gonna break it. Honestly, I didn't think I was gonna break it at all. And then Batavia, we scored like what was it, nine touchdowns that game? I, yeah. yeah. Was, well, what we yeah, I think we scored sixty four points, right? Yeah. That yeah. was one and before that, Quincy yeah. was sixty four too. Okay. Think, yeah. Maybe even. It more. was a lot. Yeah. That that playoff run. Yeah, and and that was fueled by Loyola, like what you yeah, said, like you're just due for a right. loss, that and the it carries over. Us. Yeah, so that we love that. Um, yeah. But yeah, consistency is great too. Um, that PAT record is, I think it'll stay out there for quite some time unless yeah. we get another great offense that comes around. Um, yeah, it'll probably next great offense will probably come next year, and then it'll yeah, it'll yeah. continue to get better. Lynch and the Lynch stays, but with that offense, honestly, it, the only way a kicker can beat it is if he's there for three years like I was and mm-hmm. getting just getting the opportunities because you're going to get a lot of opportunities regardless because they just score. It's felt like every time they touch the ball, they were going to score. Yeah. That's another thing. You were on varsity for three years, yep. which I think Dupree was the only other guy that did that. Parker. There was right. yeah, okay. five of us. Where was it? 
there's a picture somewhere in my phone from the Rita game my sophomore year. It was me, Darion, Parker, Rafik, and Mo Davis. Oh, right. That was okay. the five, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Five, yeah, five guys got pulled up. What was that like, though, um, getting pulled into Mount Carmel football? You have yeah. your freshman year, which is a very, you know, that builds the foundation, mm-hmm. and then you're 15 years old standing on the sideline being like, dude, what is going yeah. on? Like, you know, what what was, uh, how did that all go down? I, I mean, I loved it. It was really fun, like, looking back, but I, I was a freshman, and I didn't think I was going to get moved up at all. And I had a pretty good year, and then Coach Lynch just – I remember when – July it was June or July it was June camp and I showed up and for like I was walking going to walk to Jackson with the JV team and coach Lynch was like yeah you're gonna be with us and I was Mm. that was kind of like me getting moved up and so I had to compete for a spot because there was a senior and I won the spot and I was probably like my sophomore year I think I might have been 110 pounds jeez yeah and five foot like for me like i was small out there did you ever get hit in a game ever? sophomore year i did not no but but this year that was yeah, one of the end of the awesome. TV game. yeah at yeah. uh, christos uh i was it was later in the game and we were on the sideline filming something and i i heard christos just like go oh my <laughs> god let's go i'm like what happened what's going on he's like louis just laid out this kid on the sideline and we're all going nuts or my uncle my yeah. da- <laughs> dean dan o'connor was going crazy usually he just stands there at the student yeah. section with his arms crossed but he's going nuts he's going wild uh they put the replay up on the scoreboard yeah. and you just you kind of like you wrap up the guy and oh my god take him to the ground it was great that was i think and a lot of people were like shocked that I did that, but a lot of like people don't realize like, I played football like in yeah. middle school and freshman year. Like I wasn't always just a kicker, so and I'm not gonna lie, like I I realized I think it was the Quincy game. I think I was talking to who I don't know who I was talking to on the sideline, but I was like I haven't had to make a tackle yet, and I was like I kind of really want to tackle <laughs> someone. And with the Batavia game, the, I, they were good and they were good on the return. And we took all of our starters off on kickoff. And I kind of had a feeling like the last couple, four couple, it was like they were just throwing anyone out there who hasn't gotten in yet. I was like, I might have to tackle someone. And mm-hmm. it was the last one of the game, and I I did not hit it good at all, and I got completely under it. And I knew, like, if God, I was like, oh, God, this kid's coming right at me. And yeah. I was on the other side. I saw him coming down the sideline, and I just remember being like, uh-oh, I'm going to have to tackle this guy. And, I did everything right. Like, I broke down, and I hit him as hard as I could. And I don't remember – I, like, always black out for these, like, big moments. And mm-hmm. I don't remember actually hitting him. And I just remember, like, getting up. And I guess I, like, flexed on him. I don't even know <laughs> I did that in in the time. I looked like an idiot. But I, I, like, flexed on him, and I just remember seeing the video. And I remember – like every, I thought like the whole team was right there, and I was just yeah. getting mobbed. And I was like, "Did I really just hit him that good?" Like I don't remember actually mm-hmm. hitting him. And then I like saw the like right when I went to the locker room after the game, I checked my phone, and that was the most texts I've ever gotten after <laughs> the game. There, like random people like that I haven't talked to in years sending me videos of the clip. I was like, "Wow!" Oh, wow yeah. And then I saw the actual hit. I was like, "Oh, that was actually a really good hit." Yeah, but I mean. Yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody had your back though. I felt like all those three years. So yeah. like, because like you said, you were 110 pounds as a sophomore yeah. on that, varsity as the kicker. And that first yeah. game was first like game without COVID restrictions. So we played at Rita, and I think there might have been like 7,000 to 8,000 people. Yes. Yeah, that was I remember a huge that game. game. I remember getting yeah. off the bus, and the JV game was still going on, and uh, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> There it was packed for the JV game, and one thing I'll always remember. This is pretty cool. Right when we were walking in the locker room, like we all kind of like saw the field and the stadium getting packed. And Ryan Borsma, he is a senior. He's wrestling at Missouri now. And if you any of you ever knew Ryan Borsma, he's very quiet. Yep. And he just I remember he grabbed me because I sat next to him on the bus, and he was like, "Don't even look in the crowd." And I was like, oh, Jeez. "Wow!" Yeah. And then. I remember in warm-ups, like, that was, like, the best warm-ups I had in, like, three weeks. I was hitting bombs. I loved it. And 
I like he kept telling me don't look at the crowd and I could not stop looking yeah. at the crowd that game and there were so many people and I remember the first that I we actually attempted a field goal that game and I was so like nervous not nervous but so like I can't even find the word to describe it but yeah I I when I went to kick the ball I hit my holder's hand I hit Jimmy Daisy's hand oh, yeah. completely uppercut it and it line drive and went in like I should not have made that kick, and that was my first, like, varsity kick, and I made it, and I knew I should have missed it, but I was like, I didn't care. I was like, yeah. let's go. Yeah. I mean, there were so many people. It was so loud. Did that feeling, that nervous feeling you get Ghost. of, like, looking at the crowd, because mm-hmm. you were on varsity for three years. You saw plenty yeah. of crowds like that. So as time went on, did it become normal, or were were you still finding yourself being like, what is going on right now? I'm just looking, through, looking around and taking it in. Well, that was definitely the biggest crowd I ever played in was that game. I, or maybe when we played Rice sophomore year at Rice in the playoffs. That, that was, big was too, also yeah. packed. Yeah. But I wish I could tell you that the feeling of nervousness went away, but it did not, honestly. Like, I still got really nervous each time I saw a huge crowd. Like, when we would play here in, like, random games where it'd be, you know, not anyone here like you don't get really that much nervous but like me personally i still get nervous but it was just a matter of like controlling your nerves and you know i I did a lot better job at controlling my nerves i could say that instead of saying that Mm -hmm. i got less nervous because i definitely didn't get less nervous but like playing east st louis i was felt like i was a pro like that game was packed yeah and i felt like i was kind of a pro at like calming my nerves and you know, I said earlier, like, being a leader on that team, like, I thought it was huge for me to, like, not show that I was nervous because, like, these sophomores and juniors, like, we had a lot of young guys, like, they look at me and if they see me shaking or, you know, look in the crowd and looking all nervous, then they're like, whoa, what do I do now? If right, yeah. You know? So I think it was huge for me, like, just control your nerves and have fun with it. I mean, looking back now, like, high school football is over and that was so much fun being able to play in front of, like, Nine thousand people. I mean, yeah, it wasn't actually nine thousand, but it was. A, it, it felt like it, right? Especially when Bossy came back for the turn. <laughs> then it felt probably like more than that. I mean, that was wild. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. That was. I forgot we won off the block kick too. Right. Yeah. That I, was. That game is yeah. something special because. Cemented. For, cemented yeah. In my yeah. Brain forever. Yeah. yeah. Because for Christos and I, that was our first. That was, your well, well, that was well our well That football for you. Definitely. Yeah. And I remember being in the stands with Marty Mann. Mm-hmm. And and we were all, you know, it was kind of this feeling of like, I think we lost. Because like, yeah. even if he made the kick, it's like, uh, you know. We had what, 30 seconds or yeah, whatever like it was. We, yeah. So we, we were kind of freaking out a bit. And I remember looking at my phone. I was going to go look at some other scores. Mm-hmm. And um and then I look up right about the play right as the play is about to happen and Marty just starts grabs me, starts <laughs> shaking me out. I'm like, What's going on? I see balls just sprinting on the sideline. But yeah. I mean Crisos, what do you think of that game? Yeah, that was definitely like my welcome to Mount Carmel moment right there. Oh, yeah. Like that was I think I lost my voice that night. <laughs> yeah. Uh but that that was just awesome too. Just kinda like from a fan's point of view and from a freshman point of view, yeah, right? Definitely. You go to enemy territory mm-hmm. as a freshman, right? That was our first game. We weren't even at Barta Dallin yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you kind of just, like, with a bunch of guys you just met that night, and you just start, like, like screaming at the top yeah. of your lungs together. And it's just, like, it was so much fun just to see that happen and just, mm-hmm. like, wow, like, I'm with my guys here. Like yeah. we're gonna be going to these games for the next four years, and this is how we start it. Like this is awesome. I I'm still trying to find moments like to top that. I think yeah. like Batavia, our freshman year. Yeah. You know that was a huge moment yeah. too when everybody um, stormed, yeah, like stormed the field. Um, like oh, last year, yeah. I think. The, I'll s- yeah, go on. I was gonna say that defensive stop that we had. That was yeah. That was in huge. my four years playing football here. Like, oh, that might have been the most like I had no control of my legs, my stomach. Like I was literally like <laughs> so nervous watching that defensive, and we we was like third and eleven or fourth and like ten, and they were at like the forty. They needed to score and threw that lob pass and it got the incomplete and i was mm-hmm. like we just we just beat them yeah. we beat them yeah. at loyola which is hard to do 
Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I'm a basketball guy, so I'm a little biased here. Oh, but yeah. I think getting that win against Rice at home here two years ago mm-hmm. when it was yeah. packed because we, re- yeah. you know, we retired Tracy Abrams' jersey. Mm-hmm. I just remember we were down, like, the whole game and then yeah. finally just, like, broke out fourth quarter, tied up, and just, like, wasn't even close in overtime. Yeah. yeah. Especially was, this year with basketball, too. Watching yeah. them was really fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, even, even a game like Hyde Park – like yeah. that buzzer beater from – like, right. think, about, well, think about this. If he didn't hit that, we wouldn't have made it, mm-hmm. like, past that game. Like, that's and crazy. keep going and, on, too. Like Yeah. There's so many moments from – I want to say it, it kind of did start with that 2019 undefeated football team. Yeah. Um, you know, because that ended the drought of six years, I believe, of yeah. a yeah. State, state championship. Yeah, state championship. Yeah. Yeah. Is it 2013 or 2012? 2013 was okay. the last. I yeah. think 2013. It's funny right, seeing a six-year drought. For other schools, they were in a drought for forever. Yeah. 80 years. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, for us, for us, it's like if yeah. you if you go here and during your four years, don't like get one. you don't get one, it's like you know it's when did you when did you go to school here, yeah. right? Like you got it's, like that cuts it down to a certain yeah, amount of years, yeah. Yeah, which is it's awesome. like my dad. My dad's uh, he still talks about it to this day, but he graduated in '88 and uh, played football all four oh. years, made it down his junior year, um, but th- they lost. You know they had a good team for Janik was mm-hmm. a quarterback and all that, and then of course as soon as he graduates they won four in a row. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> could have been born one year later, at right. least got one. Yeah, and. Uh, that's a rough year. Yeah. yeah. But I mean that wow. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to think of it now like I'm trying to think of the four year gats mm-hmm. that you would have to come here and you wouldn't get one. Oh. There's there's a few I know, but twenty fourteen to eighteen was my brother graduated in twenty, so he would have been a sophomore in twenty no, hold on, that was really bad math. <laughs> he would have been a sophomore in twenty or er, 2016 was his freshman year because I remember the Cubs won the World Series that year. Mm. So he was a freshman. I want to say it was 2016 or 17 where the soccer team lost in the state championship and through like yeah. thousand yeah. after 2013, like 14 to 2019, there was no state championships here. So yeah, wow. That soccer yeah. team was the closest. Yeah, we got we got pretty lucky. <laughs> the the four years you had. As well as the three Creases and I have had right you now. Got one more. We've got one, one more. more. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, we've got a couple programs set up for yeah. success. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. This this year in particular, though, I'd say when you compare this year with mm-hmm. any other, like this has got to be one of the most successful years we've yeah, had yeah. athletically. I, I feel like there was like, o- there was only a few programs that were truly in this like rebuild state of like, yeah. all right, we got to figure things out, you know, and even those like lower programs that didn't do great in the playoffs, like water polo. Mm-hmm. I know I've talked about them a little bit. Like, they upset these huge teams. Like, in the past years, they've beaten Rice, mm-hmm. Ignatius, and I'm forgetting another big one. But to see, like, these programs that don't have um, as much, like, attention um, as other ones do, to see them doing well, like, that's that's Mount Carmel yeah. Athletics, I feel like, at yeah. some point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even, I mean, chess is technically now yeah. a sport, and we, mm-hmm. I mean, what do we get, like, sixth? There's really we, this year. Yeah, there, uh, there's a uh, – Declan Deering told yeah. me what it is. I think it's like third in their division and then sixth in the conference or something. I don't know. But I know they placed very high yeah. um, for kind of what was expected. Yeah. So I took Latin for four years with Doc Barry, so – We've got to hear hear about all their chess struggles. Mm-hmm. He he was not thinking that they were going to be this good this year at all. So it's good to see that chess did really good because Doc Barry is one of the best, and yeah. it's good to see him a part of like yeah. a winning program like that. Yeah. yeah, we've the year of athletics was incredible here. Yeah, we've got guys going off to great places in the fall, mm-hmm. like you, Louis. You know, yep. best of luck to you at Whitewater, yeah. man. Thank it's a you. great school. It's a great school for football too. Uh, we hope you love it. We hope you win as much as you did here. That's kind of I'm a big ask. So too. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of a big ask, I feel like. Yeah. But, yeah, we hope you do great. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for coming out, man. We had a great talk with you. Uh, incredible four years. Great Thank run. You. Yeah. So. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, yeah, no problem. Um, Caravan fans, we're going to have two more podcasts. One with Ryan Guhuli. Louis, oh God, you know him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, um, I can't he, wait to listen to that one. Uh, yeah, another senior. Um, he's got... 
you know, we'll we'll save it. We'll save it from when we meet him, and then Chrisos and I are going to end out the year with a final podcast, just kind of recapping everything that's been going on, most notably the incredible athletic year we've had. Mm-hmm. Um, fans, thank you so much for tuning in, and good night, Chicago. Thank <laughs> you.